Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be giving you my monthly garden tour. I am located in Central Florida in Zone 9 and I'll be going through and showing you all the struggles that I've recently been uh, dealing with, all the highlights of the garden. Um, definitely it's getting crazy hot and the garden is declining and we are getting ready to go on vacation. Recently, my oldest daughter has been begging me to give her her own little garden tour. So I did do a small little video, which I'll upload at some point. And if I can get it done, I will link it in the description below, but look for the future Little Southern Dirt Garden Tour. She's super excited about it. And um, I've just kind of been putting it off, putting it off, but I want to see her thrive and she has a heart for gardening and I think she'll be able to inspire young children to get on board and start gardening and starting small little garden like she has around her little playground. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So here is the entrance to our 1100 square foot garden in the backyard. We also have a food forest with over 125 fruiting trees. We also have property with wild fruits and different plants along with uh, some chickens and cows and then uh, through the year we our children raise animals for the fair so if you are just now joining us and any of those things interest you please make sure you subscribe to my channel over here we have our two vago garden beds um, i do have some room for a third one and um, they've been doing really well it is so hot right now. Um, and I've recently taken out um, my lettuce, which has gone to seed and have planted um, different peppers over here. These are like a snacking pepper. They're doing really great. I love these they are like an orange snacking pepper. There you go. Those are doing really good. I have um, some basil here, some cranberry hibiscus, some longevity spinach right here in the middle that I just planted. I have some uh, dinosaur kale that was here left from the fall. And I recently planted the eggplant that I didn't know where I was gonna put it. <laughs> and I put it right here. It's like a white eggplant, which is doing good. And I have a, not exactly sure the variety, but a friend gave me uh, a tomato plant. It's actually a cutting that give off these black tomatoes. So I have a really special dear friend to me that always is handing me over really unique plants. A lot of these in here are from her. So that's been a really fun journey, learning about new varieties and just new different things that other people plant. So if you are in a community and you're looking for other gardening friends, just look for local Facebook groups or local garden clubs and you will meet other gardeners that will be a world of help and will be happy to share uh, plants and different things with you. Over here is our basil. I recently cut it back. It was just going crazy. Just like this basil over here, which has gone to seed. I didn't cut them back because I wanted to just show you how pretty they look when they do go to seed. Um, these are all hooked up on a drip system. I recently bought some connectors to put drip into these Vago garden beds. Um, over here we have some mint, just doing beautifully. This flower is so pretty. I love eggplant flowers. This is also a um, foxglove that I put here. Over here we have finally covered the ugly wall mount and electrical box. I have a little uh, trellis behind there. You can't see. It's just this old rusty uh, door that I've allowed to these beans to climb up and they have taken over. These are starting to flower up top. You can start to see a little bit of flowers. I did not think they would grow as tall, but they're doing their thing and we'll see what um, those pods look like in the next video. I've got two foxgloves on the sides and um, little zinnia here. Over here we have the green stock garden, which I do have three. I absolutely love the green stock garden. It's great for 
small patios or a small areas if you don't have a big area to garden um, this is just perfect for the beginner gardener i have all kinds of different things in it from flowers to collard greens to succulents to herbs peppers um, i even have a little mini tomato plant here that was doing great i have lavender which surprisingly, I never really do go with lavender, but it has been surviving in my green stock and it looks beautiful. We also have kale and some more peppers and flowers, but I've been really happy with my green stocks. And if you wanna save $10 off your order, you can find my affiliate link in the description below. Over here, we have our tomato plants. These are called Money Maker. They have been struggling with blight. Um, I do have an overhead sprayer where the rest of my garden is on drip, which will help with any type of disease on your plants. So if you do not have a drip system, I definitely recommend it. Um, in the beginning, I started with overhead sprayers. Um, it was just easier to set up. I didn't really know a whole lot about gardening and the wetness. Keeping your plants wet every day is not healthy. So recently I have found a, uh, some copper it's an organic OMRI um, copper spray. And I sprayed these down, hopes, hoping to um, get rid of that blight. There are some new sprouts that are coming back nicely, but I have harvested a ton of these tomatoes. And I just started saving seeds. So maybe next season, I'll have enough seeds saved to sell. But so far, this has been one of my favorite varieties right next to the Everglades tomato, which I'll show here, you here in a little bit. Um, but I do have those seeds for sale on my website. Over here, we have another eggplant. Look how beautiful this one is doing. These are just nice size eggplants. I also have some celery in here that is ready to harvest. The celery has done much better in my bago garden beds than in the ground. I recently harvested them. I'll show you here in a second. But I've been really happy with my bago garden beds. And you can save $15 off your order with my affiliate link in the description below. But I'm going to go ahead and harvest a carrot. I have already harvested the carrots from my in-ground garden. But what we've noticed is the carrots in our Vago garden bed are allowing a much deeper root than in ground in our in-ground garden. These I planted a little later than the ones that I have in my in-ground garden. The girls have pulled quite a few big ones out of here. I just had planted these way too close together, but here you go. It's a little early to pull that, but you can still pull that and eat it. A lot of our carrots, we pull small and eat whenever we are ready. I also have some onions left in here. Here we go. I have harvested all my onions out of my big garden. Our herbs are doing fantastic. This is uh, the original plant that I started with, there's my original garden. Before I started gardening, I just kind of put together a small little herb garden, went into my local um, nursery, and they put one, helped me put one together. And this guy is like, I don't know, seven, seven or eight years old. But it's still alive, it's the only one plant I have yet to kill. And we have Cuban oregano and Puerto Rican oregano. These are real great to feed your chickens or put in tea. There's all kinds of benefits to oregano. We, um, I take oregano almost daily to keep any kind of sickness away. And you can definitely put that in tea or in meals. It is getting so hot. Over here, this is the last uh, plants that I will be planting into the garden this year. We do plan to leave for a couple weeks and visit the Keys. We like to take some time off with our kids and do some fishing and snorkeling and spear fishing. Um, here we have our cinnamon pumpkins. 
they have already shot out their third leaf, which is their true leaf. So these are ready to be fertilized. As you can see these little holes in here, let me see like right there. So, and you notice there's no plant there. This is where a little mouse has come in and dug up my seeds. You can see there's little seeds here that are eaten up and spread out throughout. And again, here's an empty hole. So I definitely recommend that you, whenever you're starting seeds, bring them inside at night or keep them inside until they sprout. As soon as they sprout, bring them outside into their natural elements. I also have some loofah and I collected some seeds from a teal pumpkin I bought this fall up in North Carolina that was really cool. And I was curious to know if I could grow it here in Florida. We'll see. So stay tuned to that. Over here, we have some curly kale and I have some romaine. I keep just cutting back my romaine um, at the bottom when it goes to seed and I continue to harvest. So I've literally had multiple harvests from my romaine um, and by just cutting it back when it does go to seed. So that has been wonderful. Here's some that are flowering that I can save the seeds from. I've got an onion here left over. Over here, I have some fox gloves. Now you can see I have some that are pretty rough. A lot of this side of the garden has not been doing the best because I found out I had an irrigation leak. So recently I had to dig, pull up all my irrigation um, from the mulch because I threw mulch on top of the drip line and found out I had a, a damaged line over here. So I recently fixed it. Hopefully these plants will perk back up. Um, I, these are foxgloves that I'm not 100% sure if they will flower this year or they will flower the second year. After doing some research, there's certain types that will not flower the first year and just come back. So I hope it flowers this year. Um, over here is where I had my celery. I recently cut it back. As you can see, I cut this one back a while ago and it is sprouting some new celery, but honestly, it's so hot right now that I don't think the celery would even be do well, even if it did come back. So I kind of left it there to see what it will do. I think I'm just gonna plant some little pumpkins here. Here are those multi-head sunflowers. I'm letting them dry to store to sell next season. A squirrel has knocked this one down and is taking seeds along with ugh, my mammoth sunflowers. So that has not been fun. Over here is that little butterfly bird mix that I sprinkled through. If you guys go back, maybe, I don't know, several videos ago, I show you the seed packet that I used um, and I just kind of spread it all throughout. But these have been really nice to see the different colors pop up and hopefully in the next video, I'll have some more flowers to show you. My daughter actually has a butterfly and bee mix in her garden, which you can watch. Um, she will be, we did a little tour of her garden and she calls her garden Little Southern Dirt. Over here, I have some acorn squash. I'm sorry, not acorn squash. This is butternut squash. So these guys are over here and they weren't getting hit by the irrigation well so hopefully those guys will be perked up i planted some flowers in here i can't remember what they were over here i have some dahlias they are a pink color so i'm really excited about seeing those recently we trimmed back all of our blueberries we have um, emerald blueberries that wrap around our entire garden here. I think we have about 50 of them. So we recently did that. We usually do that at the end of the harvest. They, um, they give you a harvest in the fall and the spring. So we just finished that. Over here we have what's left of our collard greens. I've been struggling with white flies and aphids, um, you name it, any kind of bug we have had them, especially this time of year, it's getting so hot, it's really hard to keep them off. So I have been trying to spray the garden um, every seven days, but it's more like every two weeks. Sometimes I can't even 
find the time to get in the garden and do that. Um, so we've lost a couple plants due to bugs, but it's okay because we planted extra this year um, just in case we needed it. Um, but this is called a Vates variety and it's my favorite variety. Over here we have some squash and some zucchini. These guys, again, need a little bit of perking up, but they've been giving me a lot of squash. Look at all of the um, squash coming out of there. We've got some here. These are my zucchini plants, which are a lot more healthier than these. Now, earlier in the season, my zucchini were struggling more than my squash. And what I did is I came out here and used Neptune's Harvest fertilizer. It's actually a foliar feed that will help rescue your plants when they are dealing with powdery mildew or if they're just stressing. So I wanted to see if it actually worked and it absolutely did. You can save 5% off your order of all the fertilizers that I use. You can find the link in the description, but just to show you a comparison of what I probably should have done is sprayed all of them and these guys are doing really well I'll show you some flowers here and some little fruits coming in over here we've got some flowers here my youngest daughter has planted some zinnias it's so fun to watch her come out here she'll run out every day and go ah mommy look my flowers are growing so she is, she is very proud of her zinnias. Over here, I have some dinosaur kale. We've been harvesting quite a bit of dinosaur kale. They start off towards the ground and as they grow, they like, kind of look like trees. So um, they're doing really well. We've struggled with um, aphids on these as well. You can see there's all kinds of holes but I've been spraying with BT and neem oil to kind of help control those. That guy's getting really big. Over here we had all of our carrots, which we have harvested. And I have a few different types of varieties of collard greens here. This one kind of grew a little different than most. Usually you'll have one stem that comes up. This one had like multiple stems and it was really hard to spray it um, with the BT and neem because there's so many different ways that the leaves were doing and they were folded in and this one ended up dying, but it's okay. We have others that are alive. Over here, I have some mustard greens. They're just not doing good. It's so hot. By the end of the day, this garden gets over eight hours of sun and the leaves are just laying on the ground. So um, I have eaten a little bit of these mustard greens, just not my favorite. Along with um, the kale, the curly kale over here, because it's in full sun, it's just not doing as well as my curly kale up here. So I think next year I'll just change the way I have these gardens. Over here, we did have a multi-head. Um, sunflower. I recently cut what was left of the sunflower heads to save the seeds. Over here, unfortunately, looks like we got a squirrel that is climbing up and eating the seeds or a bird. I think most likely a squirrel and that one too. I've got a couple of foxgloves over here. And originally I had green beans planted along here. We had pole beans over here and regular bush beans. And I made the mistake of planting a bush bean that we used to have in our food plot for our deer in the back uh, property. And didn't take much time after our feeder was, we didn't realize the feeder was out of corn for a few days. And the deer just got curious and came over here, ate all the beans. They were jumping this fence. Recently I put a little owl here, which I had towards the back of the garden. Um, and hopes to keep them out. I also purchased some mothballs and these little holders. And um, when I get some time, I'll try to put together an Amazon, um, some Amazon links for you guys so you can find all the products that I use um, and maybe create a little store. Cause I'm constantly getting asked where, what do I use and what works? So I'm gonna try to do that over the summer 
while we are traveling a whole lot. Um, this sunflower, again, has gotten eaten a ton. This whopping sunflower is crazy huge. Just to give you an idea, that that's a, our playground, and I'm don't even I'm not even as tall as the playground. Though I don't have a sunflower head at the top yet. Usually you can see a head, and I have a feeling that a darn squirrel has already climbed up there and ate it. So usually if a squirrel eats the head of the sunflower before it opens, usually some will start popping out um, of the sides. So hopefully we'll get some popping out of there. And this is my daughter's garden, so her little playground garden. If I have the video to show you of her tour, I it will be in the description below. If not, you will soon see it. And she calls herself Little Southern Dirt. Over here is what's left of the fall garden. I have not been planting a whole lot because we are going to be gone a lot this summer. So I'm trying my best not to get ahead of myself because I constantly keep going to the store and buying more. I just can't help myself. <laughs> Over here is our other green stock garden. We have, which is one of my favorite peppers. These are called banana peppers. You can go um, and look at some of my short videos of my kids and I planting, or sorry, harvesting um, these peppers and lettuce in the green stock. Um, I have, I think th two at the bottom tiers are full of the peppers and the rest are different lettuces. I also have some lavender here that's doing good. And again, with the lettuce here, anytime it goes to seed, I just snip it back. And what it does is it continues to grow more leaves, which I can continue to eat. So that has been something different I did this year, which is allowing me to harvest more food. I recently put uh, some drip irrigation into the top of this because we will be leaving. And what it does is it puts three gallons of water into this every day. Now in the fall, I was doing probably two gallons. Because it's so hot, that is what I'm trying right now. It may not be the same for you, um, depending on how much sun your green stock is getting, but that's a question I get asked a lot is how often do you water? It really depends on what type of plants you have, where it's located, um, and how dry and what type of soil you have in your green stock. So just give it a try if you need to. You'll notice if you need more water as your plants start to wilt and going into the summer, um, the plants will just wilt on their own, even if the, you're watering plenty enough. Over here is my other green stock garden, which has strawberries. I've been struggling with blight. See these little spots on there? Um, I recently sprayed them with copper to see if I could rescue them. To be honest, most of the year, my strawberries have blight and I never touched them. Um, though I did want this to continue to look pretty but we have been harvesting the most delicious strawberries possible that you can eat. Anything fresh from the garden is going to be much better than what you can get at the store. Here are my rose bushes, which a couple months ago, right before Easter, of course, right before we had our Easter gathering, I had these beautiful bushes and a deer came through and snipped every single one of these roses off. I was very disappointed, but you know what? It pruned it for me. So <laughs> that's one way I could look at that and be happy and not angry. Over here, we have a mammoth sunflower. Oh, and I've already got a squirrel bird eating it. Over here, I have some more tomato plants. I actually started all these tomato plants from cuttings. And if you want to know how to start tomato plants from cutting, go to my short videos and watch the Never Buy Tomato Plants Again video. <clears throat> so these are already producing some tomatoes. And as you can see, these aren't struggling with blight like the ones in my raised bed because I have overhead sprayer in that bed where my leaves were getting constant water. Whereas in this garden, I have drip. Over here is Everglades tomatoes. These will continue to thrive through the summer, whereas most tomatoes won't. 
a lot of tomatoes, the flowers will start to fall off and not produce any fruit when the temperatures get to around 80 degrees at night and much hotter during the day. So what I've found with Everglades tomatoes is they will produce straight through the summer. They are crazy and I'm gonna show you a huge Everglades tomato I have in my back barn garden. Over here is where our peas were. They have just pretty much been on their outs and are dried up. I've got a couple of fox gloves here. Over here is my ancient collard tree. And this was, this is probably two years old. I transplanted it from over here before we did our um, bago beds. And it is still producing. And my goal is to just keep producing food off this and in hopes maybe you'll go to seed and I can start saving seeds to sell because collard greens are really great for the south and growing and just produce so much food. It's probably one of the biggest producers in our garden is collard greens and kale. Over here I have a few kale plants that have survived from my chickens devouring this side of the garden. So thankfully this area is a little more shady. These guys actually may last till the fall. I have a some little pumpkin that I planted here. And I've got some sunflowers I recently planted here. And I believe that completes my garden tour. If I can get to my food forest, I will give you a quick little video. Life has been crazy. It's the end of the school year. And we have been preparing to go on a big trip this summer. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with the garden, but it's most likely going to be a jungle towards the end of the summer. But we are taking our drivable camper, which we just purchased, and we're gonna live in it for about 30 days. And we're gonna take it out west and visit all the national parks. We're gonna start at the Grand Canyon go all the way to Glacier National Park and we're gonna visit all the parks in between with Yellowstone included. So we're really excited about that. It's been one of those lifetime goals and future family plans. And this year we're doing it. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna vlog that or not, but if I do, I will put the link to that new channel in the description below. I figured for the next 30 days, um, it may be fun if that is a trip that your family has been interested in doing. And most likely I'll just show you the highlights of our family and what we're doing along the way. So here's the backyard garden and this has gotten no attention at all. This is one Everglades tomato, just one. And struggling with a little bit of blight again because I have overhead watering and I planted this earlier in the season. <clears throat> it actually survived the freeze. And I just wanna show you the tomatoes. They're just these perfect little petite tomatoes. They're easy to just throw in salsa and throw onto a salad, but they just produce like crazy. I mean, look at this. It continues on the back side of our fence here. So these are great producers, especially for the South when it gets hot. Um, I have seeds for sale on my website. Over here is this old water trough my husband brought home. And we have uh, dinosaur kale and collard greens. So they're looking rough. This is a garden I kind of just let be. It's more like the chicken garden. So the chickens come back and eat as they want. Sometimes I will feed our cows, which we do have a new baby. If you are following me on Instagram, I have been uh, uploading plenty of videos of that new calf and we have another mama expecting and I've been anxiously awaiting that because I want her to give birth before we leave and so I can show you that calf as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is kind of my crazy propagation station and plants area and compost but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do appreciate all of your comments, all of your questions, all of your encouragement, and all of your orders, and of course, any of the affiliate links you use that helps my channel grow and allow me to do more content for you. This is a passion I have and a lifetime journey.
that, I hope to bring you years to come.